Hi, I'm going to be talking about the various Warhammer 40k Rhino to Predator options. Basically, um, how we go from a Rhino and uh, build it up into a Predator. Or, in my case, how we buy a Predator box and um, can make it convertible into a Rhino, which is um, basically something that I suggest that anybody do probably a always a better option than just uh, buying the Rhino box, seeing as the difference in price is very minimal. So here we have the uh, Predator, Chaos Space Marine Predator, a Chaos Space Marine Rhino, and a regular um, Space Marine Rhino. Okay, let, let's start with the Rhino. So the Rhino parts, that kit basically comes with the parts to make this Rhino. The CSM kit comes with all the parts to make this Rhino, plus what's necessary for the um, uh, Chaos Space Marine spiky bits. And then finally even more parts are added to make the um, Predator. But all of the parts for the Rhino, for the bare Rhino, are still in this Predator kit. Okay, parts like these doors, Parts like, well, this door here, um, this uh, storm bolter stand, even though they're not used in the Predator, they are um, in the box. They're all on the same sprues. Okay, so the differences between Predators specifically and Rhinos are Predators have the side sponsons with weapons. Obviously, they have the turret. One thing that the Rhino has that the Predator does not is the Storm Bolter. So Rhinos do have Storm Bolters, or in the case of Chaos Space Marines, they have Combi Bolters. So, how do you convert one into the other? So to do that, I just added magnets. So I'll go over the specific magnets and how you add them in the case of the um, Predator. Okay, so basically by taking these parts off, you convert your vehicle from a Predator to, well, something that could become a Rhino with a couple parts. So I have the parts hidden here, in here, the Rhino parts. Very convenient. And of course these just slap on where the uh, Predator parts came off. There. there you go. Very simple. Specifically how I did the magnetization. If we pull this up, you can see very small magnet here. This is a 1 16th thickness by 1 8th diameter. Lots of resellers um, who sell products directed at tabletop war gamers um, sell these magnets. I believe they would label these as small magnets. Um, and many people who use uh, magnets for vehicle magnetization would in fact use a larger magnet just to make, thing, make sure things are on uh, stronger. The advantage to these small ones is that they can be used in all kinds of other um, applications like for uh, uh, walkers or even individual um, units. So uh, th this is what I had on hand and I made it work and in fact it does work perfectly well for uh, this application. Now on here this is not a magnet. This clearly is uh, just a piece of um, metal screw that I ground down to the correct dimensions. And I did that instead of using a magnet, one, because it saves one magnet, uh, but also because uh, it was just easier for me to um, get a piece of metal to the right dimension than it was to uh, get a, uh, um, you know, to get the magnet positioned properly. I'll just compare. You can see these two pieces. Um, obviously, the one with the heavy bolter on it is thicker, so... You, I needed something to make up that um, thickness. And 
This piece obviously does not need to be held on as strongly because it's uh, it's got nothing on it. Now, when these magnets come in contact, you actually want a gap here. Now, this what you're seeing here, this part is perfectly done um, in that you can see that the plastic is being held tightly on. The plastic of the door here is just being held tight against the plastic of the tank. And there's, it can't wiggle, it's perfect. And that's because the metal is not actually making contact with the magnet. There's gonna be a very, very tiny gap there. And um, that means that the plastic is what is um, being held together. It's effectively keeping the metal and the magnet apart, which is actually perfect. Now, unfortunately, this part demonstrates the um, kind of other situation where the two magnets are now in direct contact and the plastic is not. Okay, now you can see that because when I move the plastic around or when I move this part, it does move easily and it in fact wiggles. Putting these parts together um, just make sure that there's a gap between the magnets. A very thin gap um, width of a piece of paper uh, is really what you're looking for. Um, now, when I paint these, uh, if I paint this side and this side and then put it together, um, that may actually um, fix this problem. Now, moving on to this top part. Uh, to get the top part off, just now in this case, there really wasn't a good spot to um, put the magnet inside the tank. Um, there would be all kinds of possible ways that you could fix that and build yourself a uh, correct place for the magnet to um, stay within the tank. I basically built a bracket out of sprue that I had in front of me here from um, cutting apart the uh, model, cutting the model out of the sprue. You're left with all kinds of little plastic bits that you can make into angles. And what I had, so here's basically the sprue that you get. This is the bracket that I made or one of the other brackets that I made. Um, j basically just a right angle piece so that it can be glued on to the tank. Let's see. All right, so just so that it can be glued on to the top of the door there or top of the uh, ceiling and then hold the magnet in place so that it can make uh, good contact. I, I guess Games Workshop intends that you glue the turret directly to the um, hull um, and basically fix it in place. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have um, a turret that spins. And so to fix it into place, I just again cut some of that sprue that's always around and that works obviously so well with the plastic glue that we all use. Um, cut it so that it uh, basically holds the turret into, play, into the top of the tank um, but uh, uh, still allows it to spin around. There are also other videos online which um, detail very clever ways to get the uh, turret to change elevation, um, but like I said, I was happy with it just being non-movable. So that's about it for magnetizing the Predator so that it can be converted into a Rhino. Again, definitely what I recommend, even if you're just looking for a Rhino, um, it will take you more time to do the magnetization. I think it's probably worth it just so that you have more options down the road when you're creating army lists.